if you're going to be creating three-dimensional models from scratch and not using the primitives that we see over here on the left, you need to understand the difference between creating things with lines or polylines. Uh, the, the outcome that you get is very different. So what I'm going to do is just draw a couple of shapes in the top view so we can see what I mean. So over on the left side I have the top view. I'm just going to grab the line tool and draw a simple box. So I'm going to come down to the bottom and turn on ortho and then I think I'll just go ahead and put on object snap and I like to have on object snap tracking. For what I'm doing right now it's not a big deal but those are the three uh, you know, functions that I really like to have on. Then I'm going to come over and I'm just going to you know, do a simple square. So I'm going to make a 5 inch by 5 inch square. And once again, that was made with individual line segments. And I can see that over here on the right in 3D. So if I want to uh, you know, move my view around a little bit, all I have to do is click inside of that viewport. And if I push down on the wheel of my mouse, I get the pan tool. If you don't have a wheel mouse or that's not working properly, you can always grab the navigation bar to find the pan tool and, you know, and zooming in and out and that type of thing. I just hit enter to get out of that. Or if you right click, you're going to be able to find pan and zoom and that type of thing. So there's always different ways to navigate around the environment. Okay, so that is just a simple 5 inch by 5 inch square made out of individual lines. Now if I want to do another one with a polyline, I'm just going to come back to my top view, although I could draw in my isometric view, that's also fine. I'll just come back up, grab polyline, and I'm just going to neatly line that up with this one, although you certainly won't have to. And I'm just going to do a 5 inch by 5 inch square that's made out of a polyline. Now there's going to be a big difference between a closed and unclosed polyline shape, but right now I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to do C for close, or you could use your object snaps to close it that'll come up in the future. So once again we have a polyline and then four individual lines. Okay, now once you have uh, you know closed shapes like this and you want to make them 3D, the first way you can go about that is to use extrude. Okay, so extrude is going to be on our home tab under the modeling section and it's the first one on top. So we went over all the 3D primitives and then we come over and we see that there's extrude, loft, revolve, and sweep. Those are going to be our most common tools. We're doing ex extrude. Okay, so with extrude, I'm in my isometric view right now. What we're going to do is select the objects that we would like to take from 2D to 3D. Okay, so if I just come in and do a crossing selection and select those four individual lines and hit enter the space bar, I can pull those up or down into 3D. Okay, so I can specify the height or just click, but uh, what I think I'll do is just do a 5 inch extrusion, and you'll see that I'm getting all of these grid lines here. I'm going to do it again with the polyline. So let's extrude. I pick the line work, and in this case I only have to click on it because it's all connected. Enter. And then when I pull it up and type in 5 inches, you'll see that it looks quite different. Okay. Now, what we have here are surfaces versus a solid. If I change my view from wireframe to conceptual, for example, you'll see the difference. So on the left, with my individual lines, what I've done is basically pull up four surfaces. So they have no thickness, but you could almost kind of think of this as like they're, you know, individual pieces of paper or something. They're very, very thin. And then on the right, when we used a closed shape made out of polylines, it was all joined together, we get a solid. And they act very differently and you can do different things with them and to them. So it's surfaces versus a solid. And if I just, you know, kind of orbit around that a little bit, you'll be able to see inside. To move around in your 3D space, if you come in and pick 
orbit, and that's in my navigation bar, orbit, or I can type in 3D orbit or 3DO, and then I can spin around, and now you'll see that that's in fact hollow. There's no top or bottom. Okay, so there's a, a very significant difference there. Also notice that when I rotated that view, I am no longer in that southwest isometric view. It now says custom view up here. So if I'd like to get that back, I can just click on it, change it back to my southwest isometric, and it corrects itself. Okay, so there's a very big difference between how you create something and when you extrude it, you know, what kind of product you're going to get. Right, so for a lot of what we're going to be doing early on, it's going to be solid work, so we need to have that um, closed polyline. Now, if you drew a shape, you know, because it could certainly be much more complicated than just a box, don't forget that you can join it together. Okay, so if you had taken a line, you know, and gone five by five, you know, and presumably done a lot more work than something like that. If you realize that you need a join together, all you have to do is either select it first or after you pick the tool, that's, you know, optional. But then just go to Modify, and remember that you can pick Join. And you can join that together, and then when you do your extrusion, it will be a solid. So you can either use a polyline before the fact or join it together later. Um, but remember the difference is the difference between line and polyline is surface and solid.